Hey, when do you think a person dies? When a bullet from a pistol pierces his heart? No. When he's attacked by an incurable disease? No. When he eats a deadly poisonous mushroom soup? No. A man dies when people forget him. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today we are going to be casting our gaze upon the father figure of our very own Tony Tony Chopper and a phenomenal figure of the past, Dr. Hiroluk. Dr. Hiroluk is a wildly eccentric figure who was first introduced to us during Chopper's flashback as part of the Drum Island arc. But first up, let's address the whole doctor thing, because exactly where Hiroluk acquired his medical skills is dubious and rather unknown. A fact that becomes exceptionally obvious whenever he is actually treating a patient, because as much as he desires to help and cure them, Hiroluk more often than not ends up making matters far, far worse. And as such, he is often referred to as a quack doctor. However, this is not to say that Hiroluk isn't a skilled healer, far from it. His methods and goals are just a bit uh, unorthodox, for the field of medicine anyway. And this is very much due to Hiroluk's past, as he was not always a self-proclaimed doctor, and his earliest known profession is actually that of a thief in a faraway land in the West. Unlike his future medical practice, his skills as a thief allowed him to survive for years on end. However, eventually Hiroluk was diagnosed with a fatal illness. Now, despite being rather wealthy and seeking out many of the best physicians in the world, he found nobody who could cure this illness. Left with seemingly no hope whatsoever, and on the verge of madness, with the only thought of impending doom, Hiroluk gazed upon a mountain covered in cherry blossoms, and when he went to see another doctor, to Hiroluk's surprise, he was cured. And of course, putting two and two together, Hiroluk credited this serene vision of cherry blossoms for this cure, with his logic being that they had triggered an emotional reaction so powerful that it had impacted his own body. Once again, you know, not medically sound, but this experience would change Hiroluk's life as he decided from that moment on to become a doctor and wage war against all disease. To this effort, he even created his own Jolly Roger, vowing to fight like a pirate. Hiroluk then returned to the island of his birth, being Drum, in order to cure its citizens of a dire illness. And of course, that sickness was a bit more abstract, and his main focus was on curing the frozen hearts of the people, which had formed in response to their selfish king, Wapol. And in order to do so, Hiroluk's plan was to craft a chemical compound that could replicate, if not surpass, the beauty of the cherry blossoms that he believed had cured him. Although this was far easier said than done, as he delved into the vast and dangerous world of chemistry, with no prior knowledge, in an effort to attain the effect that he was after, often resulting in violent explosions. However, due to Wapol's increasing cockery, Hiroluk became one of only two doctors remaining on Drum Island who would dare disrespect the king's brutal authority and actually heal the citizens of the nation. Now, as stated before, generally Hiroluk would end up causing more harm than good, but his intentions were all always in the right place. He wanted nothing more than to help and heal, and he would get the ultimate chance to do so one day when he stumbled upon a wounded Chopper in a blizzard. Chopper, a reindeer who had eaten the Hito no Mi, had been cast out by his herd and branded a monster by the human residents of the island. But all of this was meaningless to Hiroluk, who immediately came to his assistance, although in order to gain Chopper's trust, he uh, had to strip completely naked, in order to prove that he did not have any weapons and was not intending on harming the young reindeer human. After performing some halfway decent first aid, Hiroluk took Chopper in as his assistant, gradually working towards his goal of healing the hearts of the citizens of Drum, whilst at the same time successfully healing the heart of Chopper. And sadly, this is where Hiroluk's fairy tale like story comes to an end, as one year after taking Chopper in, Hiroluk discovered that he still had his terminal illness, and not wanting his only friend to worry about him, Hiroluk more or less violently kicked out Chopper, and was then forced to visit his, well, I'm not sure if colleague is the right word, but we'll go with that anyway, colleague, Dr. Kureha, in order to beg her to extend his life as much as possible in order to complete his research. But of course, Chopper would go on to learn the truth of the matter, and then risk his own life to attain a mushroom that he believed would be able to cure Hiroluk. This mushroom was poisonous and Hiroluk knew it, but he gladly consumed it anyway, having been greatly touched by Chopper's actions and taking solace in the fact that his project would soon be completed. Meanwhile, the petulant King Wapol was growing tired of Hiroluk's disobedience and put together a clever ruse, spreading the word that the Ishii 20, the nation's finest doctors, had all been struck down by a grave illness. Now this was a most obvious trap, but one that Hiroluk's kind heart simply could not ignore. Although just prior to making his way to Drum Castle, he paid one final visit to Kureha and entrusted her with the formula for his cherry blossom cure, asking her to make more of it, as well as to teach Chopper medicine. Then after reaching Drum Castle and walking right into Wapol's trap, Hiroluk's immediate reaction was relief. Relief that nobody was sick and that there was no national emergency. But before he could be struck down by Wapol's bullets, succumb to the effects of Chopper's mushroom, or even pass via the way of his own fatal illness, Hiroluk poured out some of his failed formula, briefly looked back on his life, and thanked Chopper, before consuming it, thus blowing himself up. But Hiroluk's story continues far beyond his death in the form of three figures. The first of which is Dalton, a royal guard of Wapol who was so moved by Hiroluk's words and actions that he found the courage to finally defy Wapol and would go on to become the next king of Drum Island. Then we have Hiroluk's associate, Dr. Kureha, who despite believing that he was a quack doctor, mass produced his cherry blossom powder and would one day release it, an effect which was so profound that after this moment, Drum Island would be renamed the Cherry Blossom Kingdom. 
And finally, we have Chopper, who went on to become a member of the Straw Hat Pirates, and to this day is still sailing, fighting, and adventuring all across the world, slowly gaining the knowledge required to one day cure all disease. Some more fun facts about Dr. Hero Look. Like most aspects of One Piece that fall into the Four Kids era, Dr. Hero Look's legendary last words were modified in that particular dub. Those words being, oh, what a great life I've had. Thank you, Chopper. And they were changed to, I am a doctor. So as per usual, ruining absolutely everything for no good reason whatsoever. Hiruluk's name is apparently derived from an ancient Greek word, which I am now going to mispronounce for you. That word is chiruk. Whatever the case, it means surgeon or one who works with one's hands. And this isn't the only reference to medicine in his basic characterization either, as his hair is also obviously based on a medical cross. In the sixth One Piece popularity poll, Hiruluk ranks a slightly disappointing 76th place, right behind Basil Hawkins in 75th, and right in front of Marine Admiral Kizaru in 77th, which is, wow. All right, maybe Hiruluk didn't do too badly after all, eh? And finally, a truly useless fact, the exact technical terminology for Dr. Hiroluk's widespread fraudulent medical practice is indeed called quackery. But that pretty much does it for Dr. Hiroluk. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101. So when I first saw this scene, I have to admit that initially, I thought that when he'd taken off his clothes, that he was just using his old man peen as a coat rack of sorts. Which, you know, was pretty impressive for a man of his age, in what looks to be exceptionally cold weather. But of course, I realized that it was just hanging off his suitcase, and uh, yeah. It's one of those moments that really, uh, really shows me where my mind lives.